see a polar bear. Right there. Oh my gosh. All right, we are on the way to see the polar bears. And we've got the kids with us today. Come on, August. Today, I want to highlight a few things I found really interesting about the polar bear and their mating behaviors. One, size. First, let's state the obvious. These are the largest land carnivores on Earth. You don't realize how big they are until you're standing right next to them and you're like, oh my gosh, you're huge. What? what? Look how big he is. Look how big he is. It's like 12 feet. But males and females differ in size. Uh, males are typically uh, like twice the size of the female. Our male right now is a little over 1,200 pounds. This was very evident here. Look at how large Nikita is. And here is Inanna, about half his size and with a brilliant white coat. Two, solitary. Yep, in the wild, polar bears don't roam around in packs. Polar bears in the wild are solitary and they only come together for breeding. So we do the same thing here. We put them together early-ish winter at about the time they would come together in the wild. What that means for the zoo is that most of the year they keep them separated. It's only a very small season that Nikita and Nanana are put together. The purpose of which is to try to encourage their natural mating behavior. Three, mating behavior. It's hard to know if these bears will want to mate, but their behavior is a big clue. When Inanna cycles and is ready to mate, Nikita will smell her. At a certain time of the year, the male will start sort of tracking females. Um, they have a really good sense of smell. They can actually um, find a female and track her for miles just by this, like this, the smell that she's leaving from the bottom of her feet in, you know, on the ground. When he finds a female that is not being protected by another male, he'll do what's called a guarding behavior. And he'll stay with her and pretty much protect her from any other boys coming around to make sure that when she does cycle, that he's the one that's with her. When that happens, he won't let her out of his sight. He'll even go so far as to sleep with his head on top of her. This makes sense in the wild as males want to make sure no other males have the chance to mate with her. Four, delayed implantation. Polar bears can actually time precisely when they have babies via delayed implantation. Polar bears will breed late winter, early spring. But no matter what time that they breed, during that period, almost all polar bears are born in November or December in zoos, and that's because they have delayed implantation. This means that the female can meet up with a male at any time from about April to July. And it's actually a very handy survival strategy given how rare it is to encounter another polar bear in the wild. Five, hormones in the poop. The zoo doesn't take blood samples to see if the bears are pregnant. Instead, the keepers use their poop. Not only are we in the polar bear habitat, we're actually here to look for polar bear poop. Uh, the reason for that is that it's time to mate these polar bears and they use the poop to detect whether if the uh, female is ready to mate. It's really exciting actually, you're learning a lot about this stuff here. There we go. Oh, you got some! Here's some poop! You can see it's got some of the sweet potato in there. Now that sweet potato, that's important because they only feed it to a nana. Uh, a nana gets... Sweet potato, this is how we tell their poop apart because we'll see leftover remnants of the sweet potato in it. And then every couple of months we send it out to our reproductive team and they will look at all the hormones in that feces and decide whether or not things are looking good for a pregnancy. From the poop, it's apparent that Inanna is not pregnant. If she does get pregnant, you can bet we'll let you know. After all, there are only 10 mating pairs of bears in the entire United States and it would be huge news. For now, we can just sit back and watch these amazing polar bears doing their job, being ambassadors for the entire Arctic environment. Clearly, it got our kids excited to learn about all things in the frozen north. I think two Arctic foxes. They're so cute. Maybe next time, a video about the Arctic fox? Leave a comment down below as to which animal you would like us to highlight next. Thanks everybody for watching this short. More information on what the zoo is doing down in the description below and stay tuned for more episodes. I'd like to invite you now to go over to the North Carolina Zoo's YouTube page where I'll be doing an extended cut of this polar bear video very shortly. We're waiting to see if there's any mating happening and then we'll release it. Thanks again, everyone. See you soon.